Welcome everyone. In this video I'm going to try to derive a formula for the electric field at every point due to a, an infinite infinite uh, charged plane. This will be useful for when we talk about capacitors because capacitors as we know are two planes except that the parallel planes are finite. So for a capacitor we can approximate the plates by an infinitely charged plane and because you see that the formula for this uh, this infinite plane is uh, quite easy and quite uh, remarkable because you'll see that the electric field is actually constant at every point in space. So imagine here that we have this infinite plane and it expands in all directions here and it has a property called charge density which we write sigma and this is equal to the total charge divided by the total area. Both charge and area are infinite, but the charge density is a finite number. So let's imagine imagine a point here on the plane, and let's take a vertical distance here, uh, which we call H, and let's consider a charged particle called Q at this point here in space. Now let's try to, to figure out what is the what's the electric field or forces this charge is experiencing. Now this charge is experiencing forces due to all points in this plane, all the points, and let's imagine what is the electric field due to one small point of charge in the plane here. First thing we need to do is let's draw a, a line from this uh, point to the charge, and let's call this distance R. After that let's draw the distance here from the charge itself to the point of charge there and the first thing we need to figure out is what is this distance from the Pythagoras theorem we know that this distance is equal to the square root of h squared plus r squared and let's remember then that due to this charge there is an electric field pointing in this direction here on the charge because it's always the electric field always goes radially outwards from each charge. In fact, the electric field is going in all directions here. There's, it's going in this direction, it's going in this direction, this direction, and so on. But the only important direction for us is the direction that actually hits the charge here. So only this direction. Now, because this, uh, this plane here is infinite, there's going to be another charge here right uh, opposites to that one which is symmetrical to it and there is also a distance here so the first thing to notice is that because there is this charge here then the horizontal components of the force uh, on this charge will cancel the horizontal components due to the other charge because they are in opposite directions so the only actual component that will affect the charge is the, the vertical component of this charge here. And what is the vertical component? The vertical component is going to be um, due to not only these two charges, but due to a ring of charges around our central point, like this. Because of course we have uh, a charge for every point on this ring and this charge here is going to cancel with another charge that is here then there's going to be a charge here which is going to cancel with a charge that is here so all of them will have a horizontal component cancelled and only the vertical component of each charge is going to add up and affect this charge here so we want to figure out what is the electric field due to all of the ring here, all of the charges in the ring and for this we need to figure out what is, first let's figure out what is the total charge around an infinitesimal ring let me draw the ring here around the point so this ring is very thin and let's call the thickness of this ring dr it's an infinitesimal uh, radially outward ring. So this ring is, has this thickness here. 
so we can fill in the thickness of this ring and this ring is gonna have some charge and this charge is going to be used to create the electric field that is affecting this charge here so what is the total charge on this small ring we know that the circumference of this circle is equal to 2 pi times r where r is the radius here of the of the ring and so 2 pi r is the circumference so we multiply it by dr which gives you a quantity dA dA is the infinitesimal area of this ring just around this portion here not, we're not considering the inside of the ring or in the inside of the circle just the, the ring around here the thin ring so this is the amount of area we have so in order to calculate the charge we multiply this by the charge density sigma which is charge per area so that means that dq which is the small charge is equal to 2 pi r times sigma times dr so this is the small charge that we have so we have what we have the charge now we want to figure out the electric field um, which is uh, created due to all these charges again we know that the electric field is only the horizontal uh, sorry only the vertical components of this so let's figure out what is the vertical component of the electric field if there is an electric field here let's consider it due to this point charge here if there is an electric field here let's consider the angle theta here between this this line here and this one here and the vertical component is going to be this this size here times the sine of this angle theta which is going to give you this side so the components of the electric field in the h direction in the vertical direction is going to be equal to the total electric field times the sine of the angle theta uh, now what is the sine of the angle theta sine is the op opposite side divided by the hypotenuse so let's write down that sine theta is equal to h divided by the square root of h squared plus r squared so the electric field in the horizontal uh, direction is equal to the total electric field times h divided by the square root of h squared plus r squared so this is the electric field in the vertical direction so let's write this down here so eh is equal to e times h divided by the square root of h squared plus r squared so this is the second equation that we have and so now let's uh, write down write down what is the the actual electric field in the vertical direction and for this we know that let's remind ourselves that the electric field itself is given by Coulomb's law which is equal to a constant K times the test charge times the total charge that is causing the electric field divided by the distance between them squared and then we divide by the test charge because this is the the electric field only so it's the force per charge if we were talking about the actual force then we would have to include the charge so the, the actual force would be k times q times bq divided by r squared but we are talking about the electric field so this is the force per charge so this is the electric field then now the second step is to realize that our charge is the charge of the ring that we're trying to figure out so this is the charge that we have for now so the electric field here then is going to be equal to k times actually let me rem let me remove this q because it's it, it's cancel out here so this is k times q and q is the the small q the small charge that we have around the ring which is this one here 
so this is going to be uh, 2 pi times r times sigma times dr and this is the electric field due to this small ring so because it's a very small electric field let's write this as dr this is this very, very just the contribution from the ring to the electric field so it's this and then we divide by the distance between the charge and the and the uh, the, the charge the charge that uh, generates the electric field now again the distance is going to be equal to this distance here it's the same distance for all the charge remember that we are doing this for all the ring all of the charges in the ring so there's almost there's a cone here of distances between this and that so let me draw the so that's the back part and so on so the distance again the distance is the square root of h squared plus r squared so the distance squared is going to be simply h squared plus r squared so this is the electric field in this direction now remember that we are looking for the electric field in the vertical direction only because we know that the other ones cancel so we take this field and we'll multiply it by the sine of the angle theta and so this is going to be equal to so de is equal to k times 2 pi times r times sigma divided by h squared plus r squared and this times the sine of this angle here which is h divided by so times h divided by the square root of h squared plus r squared now this can be simplified by combining these two terms here so this is equal to 2k pi r sigma h divided by h squared plus r squared to the 3 over 2 and yeah I forgot to put the dr here so there is also a dr here and a dr here because this is due to the very small uh, ring so we have just figured out that the electric field due to the ring which is DE is equal to 2 K pi times R times charge density Sigma times the height times the R which is the thickness of the ring divided by H squared plus R squared all raised to the 3 over 2 okay so let's just recapitulate what we have done we have started with a small charge and we figured out that the force on this uh, small test charge here is going to be due only to the vertical due to the vertical components of the electric field because the horizontal components all cancel out then we figured out what is the electric field in the upper direction due to a small point charge here which is equal to the electric field due to the small point charge uh, times the sine of this angle then next we figured out what is the small charge due to a ring around the point here and it's equal to this from that we figure out that the electric field due to the ring is going to be given by Coulomb's law times the charge of the ring and then after that we figure out the only the vertical components of the, the electric field due to the charge on the ring now the last step is the last step is to figure out the uh, the electric field due to the whole plane the whole infinite plane not just to one ring so to do this we add the electric fields of each ring we divide the plane into an infinite number of rings like this so there's going to be a ring here a ring here a ring here and also a ring outside and so on there's lots of rings here and so we add up all of the rings and to do this uh, we use the integral and we integrate all of this so the, here comes the in integral to save the day and we write the integral like this 
and of course we want to integrate from zero to infinity because the plane is infinite and we start from radius zero from this point here so we need to integrate this guy here so th this integral is actually very easy to do uh, we have mostly constants here so this this is a constant this is a constant so we can put them out of the integral so this is going to be equal to 2 k pi sigma h times the integral from 0 to infinity of r dr divided by h squared plus r squared to the 3 over 2 and now to do this integral we can uh, we can do a substitution so we can say that u is equal to h squared plus r squared and so du by dr is equal to 2r and that means that uh, dr is equal to du over 2r so this is equal to 2k pi sigma h times the integral of r now dr is equal to du over 2r and then we have this which is uh, u to the uh, uh, to the 3 halves so this is u to the 3 over 2 and the r here cancels with this r and this 2 cancels with this 2 so this is equal to k pi sigma h times the integral of du du hold on the integral of u to the minus 3 over 2 times du And this is equal to k pi sigma h times. Now to solve this integral, you just add up. So the integral of u to the minus 3 over 2 du is going to be equal to u. If you add 1 to this minus 3 over 2, this is equal to minus 1 over 2. And you divide by minus 1 over 2. So this is equal to minus 2 u to the minus a half which is also equal to minus 2 over the square root of u so this is uh, equal to minus 2 over now the square root of u let's go back to our substitution here u is equal to h squared plus r squared so this is h squared plus r squared and let's not forget the limits from 0 to infinity and so this is equal to k pi sigma h times minus 2 times 1 over the square root of h squared plus r squared from 0 to infinity evaluated from 0 to infinity so this will be equal to k pi sigma h times minus 2 times now let's evaluate this at infinity when r is equal to infinity this is equal to zero so this is zero minus and then when r is equal to zero the result is one over the square root of h squared let me write this simply as this is of course equal to just h so minus one over h so this is equal to k pi sigma h times um, 2 over h now this minus minus cancel with this uh, minus here so this is equal to 2 k pi sigma h over h and this h cancels down which this one so this is equal to simply 2 k pi times sigma so after all that work oh after all of that work we are left with this extremely simple results that um, the electric field is simply equal to 2k pi times sigma. Now the first thing to notice about this is it's a constant. It's a constant electric field. If you see there's no h here because the h just cancelled out here. Remember that h was the distance above the plane. 
So let me copy this result here and put it back again here. So, so this is equal to the electric field E. E is equal to this. So the first thing is it's a constant. Doesn't depend on the distance. You could have the charge here, or you could have the charge here, or here, or here, the electric field, or even here, uh, below the 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 plane. So this is um, it doesn't depend on h. So the electric field is a constant, and it's upward in this direction. There is no horizontal component to it. It depends on the charge density. It depends on pi, which is really interesting. And it depends on k, which is Coulomb's constant. Now, let's rem remind ourselves that k is equal to 1 over 4 pi, uh, 4 pi epsilon naught. And this, uh, this means that epsilon naught is 1 over 4 pi times k and so the electric field is a constant above all and this will be useful for uh, in the next videos when I talk about uh, capacitors and um, because we can approximate, approximate these uh, finite plates of the capacitors as, um, as an infinite plate at least in the center and so this will simplify the formulas for uh, capacitors. So I'll, I'll finish the video right here. So uh, thank you very much for watching.